This morning on Close Up, Jeannie Forrester starting her campaign for the state's top office. With the growing field of Republicans, how will she separate from the pack? And will the national political scene hurt or help Republicans? And how low can it go? The state's unemployment rate continues to drop. Is this something to celebrate or is there something missing in those numbers? Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Josh McKelvin. There are now some well-known names from state and city politics in the race for New Hampshire governor. The newest Republican state senator, Jeannie Forrester from the Lakes region. Is this the year, though, that a Republican will take back the state's corner office? It's been a while. Or will the other names on the ticket help the Democrats win the job once again? Senator Forrester, though, my first guest this morning. Good to see you. Congratulations on your decision. Thank you, Josh. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Uh, Somebody might ask, man, after a number of years, Senate finance, budget writing, why would you want more state government in your life? <laughs> no, why, why do you want this job? Well, thanks for asking, Josh. And again, thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, I think Concord needs to head in a different direction. And I am a real conservative with real experience. And I think that's an important distinction in this race for governor. Um, I believe in limited government and personal responsibility. I believe we need to protect the life of the unborn child. I believe we need to protect and support Second Amendment rights. And, and I will take the pledge against the sales and income tax. And so th I think those are going to be really important distinctions in the Republican race. And as I run and look at my campaign, I'm going to be focused on three issues. First, I come from Main Street. Uh, I have a background in Main Street. I think it's really important that we return power back to the communities. And I want to, I, I've done that in the, the time that I've been in the Senate for six years, really representing mm. our local communities. I want to bring that to the corner office. The second thing I want to focus on in this campaign is. Um, the fact that we need to deal with the drug and alcohol, drug, alcohol and opioid crisis in the state, and that'll yeah. be a primary. And heroin. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a huge problem right now. Let me get to, and we're going to get to a lot of issues, sure. though. But you're you're in a field now with an executive counselor with a lot of name ID, Chris Sununu. You have a longtime uh, uh, mayor of Manchester, former state senator, Ted Gatsis in there. Kind of a newcomer in, uh, in Frank Edelblut. Why are you more qualified than the others in the field? Well, they're all good candidates, but I come from Main Street, and as I said to you a few minutes ago, I think that's an important distinction. And as far as I know right now from the other candidates, I haven't heard that they're pro-life, uh, pro-gun, um, anti-tax. I haven't heard that yet. Maybe that's out there, but I haven't heard it. And again, a, a really important distinction is that I come from Main Street. I am a voice for communities, and um, as a governor, I will be a voice for the people. Yeah, Jeannie Forrester, give me a mandate on, on getting this information out of the other candidates. I'll do that. Uh, but let me ask you, when you, uh, you've been writing a lot of budgets, is there something, you know, and every year, every budget cycle, there's a lot of contentiousness and rancor and, and where do we put the money? Is there something that from that job and the numbers that you looked at said, you know what, I can apply this better? And if so, where? Well, let's take the drug issue, which I think obviously is an important one. Uh, we have put a lot more funding this time around to drugs and alcohol, the, that issue, 75% more than in the last budget. And what makes me fundamentally different than the other candidates is I actually have experience on this issue. I worked for Odyssey House, a drug and alcohol treatment facility for youth, and so I knew back then the problems we were having in the state. And when, when I got to the Senate, I fought really hard. I sat on the governor's, sit on the governor's commission, fought really hard to get extra funding. I think we need to put more funding towards things like interdiction. I filed a bill, uh, I believe it's going to pass, Granite Hammer, to put more uh, um, law enforcement out on the streets. The other thing we need to do is focus more attention on early prevention education. It needs to happen early, it needs to happen often. We need to get our young, young people um, as, as in their minds, as uh, comfortable saying no to drugs and alcohol as they are to, safe, uh, to buckle up for safety. Sure. Uh, and that's something, obviously, is an enormous problem that we're, uh, collectively a lot of people are working on right now. Uh, let me ask you, you talk about conservative credentials, Medicaid expansion. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of conservatives say anything related to the ACA, the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare needs to go. It's been reauthorized here in New yep. Hampshire. You're part of that. Yes. So how do you make the argument to the conservatives that you know, this was a program that couldn't go? Well, uh, I think uh, the bill 
uh, in this session was very different from the one in the uh, two years ago. And I had some real strong concerns about this uh, particular bill. One is that we couldn't get any kind of guarantee from the insurance companies or the health care organizations that they weren't going to cost shift when they pick up that percentage that they're going to pick up uh, that the federal government's not going to pay. That was a real concern to me. And the second piece of that is we didn't have the work requirement that I feel is necessary when I talk to people who are out there struggling to pay their mortgage, working two jobs. Um, this is essentially, uh, with reauthorization, is essentially a $10,000 free health care. For people and we want people to have health care but certainly able-bodied childless adults need to at least be looking for work doing community services service or have a job and that wasn't in this bill all right let's talk about the economy a lot of republicans are pointing to uh, right to work legislation is something that they would include but you know what job numbers say that new hampshire is doing pretty good right now mm. and there's a lot of people obviously on the other side who think that right to work would just damage an economy that's already very healthy well, I've always supported right to work. Um, I don't think it will uh, damage the economy. I think it's a it's a good place for New Hampshire to be, and I would support that if that came forward again. Okay. I always have. Sure. Uh, <coughs> let's talk about the the campaign itself uh, and the national level, from Donald Trump, Ted Cruz, and just the theater that goes along with that. Are you afraid or concerned that? What happens at the top of the ticket will have a major impact down the ticket, possibly yourself? I am not, and that's because I have strong confidence in New Hampshire voters. We, New Hampshire is a very unique state, and I think they do their homework, they look at all the candidates, and look, you see just what with what happened in New Hampshire, clearly people are frustrated and angry. And I believe that in New Hampshire, um, the folks here will make the right decision, and. Um, they do their homework. Yeah, I mean, are the rules different this time? I mean, right out of the gate, I'll point out. I mean, I've known you for a while. You're a very nice lady. Obviously, you, you work hard and you, and you care. Uh, but you start needling Chris Sununu right after you, you well, your campaign, tying him to Washington and, over and Twitter. And, I, and I'm actually, I'm glad you brought that up. Look, I, I wouldn't consider it needling here. I, I, as I said to you a few minutes ago, I come from Main Street. Um, I'm going to be out there working Main Street, 234 cities and towns across the state. I'm going to be campaigning on Main Street. I won't be campaigning and raising money on K Street in Washington, D.C. I think that's a fair distinction between the two candidates. Yeah, but it's going to take some money to, to obviously win this thing, and it's going to be divided amongst a lot of different candidates. Uh, so how do you go about it? What are you going to do differently? Because name ID is going to be, at least initially, kind of a problem for you. Well, I don't know. You look at Jeb Bush, and it didn't work so well for him in the state of New Hampshire, did it? Uh, and all the money that he spent. So, uh, but to your point, I have a great finance committee who's committed to raising the money we need uh, to win this race, to be a credible race. And they are business people. They are people from Main Street. They're not the kind of local, you know, names that you would recognize. So I'm really confident we're going to be able to raise money we need to win this race. Let me ask you another thing that's really based on philosophy. It's not a state issue, but something that's being talked about a lot in the Senate race, and that's uh, the st Senate stalemate uh, on the re or the nomination uh, for Supreme Court uh, Justice uh, Merrick Garland. Kelly, yeah, I just want to do it, wants to wait to the next president, saying it's too important of a seat uh, not to have uh, the voters weigh in. Others are saying, you know what, it's kind of your job to do this. Where do you fall? Well, I will tell you, Jess, that I'm focused on the state of New Hampshire, not 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 national politics or what's happening there. I'm going to leave that to Senator Ayotte to figure that out for but herself. Are you concerned, though, that that does only feed into the perception that, you know, lawmakers, it's all about, you know, uh, winning rather than doing what maybe might be the best there. It's all politics or... And I'm not suggesting that her, her position is wrong either. I'm just saying that there's a perception out there, you know, for Congress that you know they can't get anything done because of this type of politics. Well, well, certainly I, I, that could be a perception. But again, I would say to you that I would not second guess Senator Ayotte's uh, position on anything. She knows better what's happening in Washington than I do, and I'm focused right now on my campaign and what's happening in the in, in the Senate in here in New Hampshire, doing my job. Okay, and talking about uh, the drug issue, just coming back to that very quickly. What are we doing wrong, or what haven't we done yet that you think needs to be applied? Well, I wouldn't say that we've done anything wrong, but I think that we have spent a lot of money 
we've appropriated a lot of money. The money's not getting out there. I'll give you a good example, Katie, which is a local uh, program in Plymouth, New Hampshire, a agency that serves youth. Um, there was money appropriated in the last budget for funding, and this program's been in the system for years and years and years. Nine months before they got $20,000 from the state of New Hampshire. I, found, I find that outrageous, and that's a problem uh, we're having in the state. We appropriate the money, but government is not moving fast enough to get that money out there. And so if we're doing anything wrong, that's it. We're not getting the money out there. You see it in mental health, right? You see it with the, the 10 beds that are not going to be uh, staffed up until July. Uh, the DD wait list, we, fund, we appropriated all that money and the money didn't get out there, didn't get spent. So that's what we're doing wrong. So how do you speed that up? I think it goes back to um, something I said earlier is that bureaucracy in, in Concord has grown so strong over the years and we need to cut through that red tape. We need to streamline, we need to really look at things um, that prevent uh, state government from moving faster. Okay, so uh, again, moving forward, when you just talk about uh, you, what your campaign issues will be, you talk about the drug issue, everybody agrees that is a major one. Uh, other candidates are talking about the e economy. Um, it is going to be a tough sell. You know what? Uh, the, the economy is stagnant here in New Hampshire, not doing what we should be doing. What would you do differently, aside from right to work, uh, or champion yeah, up yeah. in Concord? I'm glad you asked that question. Sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, you know, I was a Main Street director for two award-winning Main Street programs. I don't know if you're familiar with Main Street programs, but it's, uh, it's dealing with or working with small businesses to help the local economies grow and thrive. And uh, one of the main things I think needs to happen in the state of New Hampshire is it needs to be more grassroots, bottom-up. We need to have the communities uh, working to, um, we need to be listening to them. And one of the first things I do, you didn't ask a question, but I'll tell you anyway, in sure. my first I'll 100 days, <laughs> <laughs> in, in my first 100 days, um, I would convene a summit of the all 10 counties, talking to the select boards, talking to the local communities, getting their ideas about what we need to do to get out of their way to help them become economically v viable because most of this state is made up of small businesses. And I know from firsthand experience that if we help local communities, it will help the state. Yeah, communication is key in a lot of different areas. It is. Senator, best of luck to you moving forward and congratulations once again on your decision. Thank you. Good to see you. Bye. We'll be right back with more talking about those job numbers. Stay with us.